New York cruise ship has finally docked at its next port of call. While those announcements are being made, your fellow passengers are heading down to the gangway. But you remain put. Why? Well, today we're going to share with you one of our insider cruise tips that's going to completely change your next cruise up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise. Now, Heidi and I have been on over 75 cruises with 15 different cruise lines. In this video, we're sharing one cruise tip that works regardless of the cruise ship or a cruise line or the region that is going to make your cruise that much better. And what is it? Well, one thing we always do is we set aside one port of call day to stay on the ship. And in this video, we share the 10 reasons why you should consider doing the same exact thing. Now, of course, we love cruising as you get to visit some fantastic destinations. So it might sound counterintuitive to remain on the ship when stopped at a port of call. But honestly, one simple way to save money is to stay on board during a port of call. Skip going ashore to save money on tours and excursions. And frankly, depending on your itinerary, odds are there's a destination that probably doesn't really interest you anyway. And this might vary from cruiser to cruiser. There might be a destination that's all beaches and you're not really a beach person, or there might be a destination that's a busy city and you're not really into cities. It doesn't matter. Odds are you can find a particular port of call on an itinerary where you're like, I'm okay. I don't really need to leave the ship on that day. So why waste money when there are many other places on your itinerary during your cruise that you actually want to visit and get to explore? This can also be useful if you plan on splurging at another port of call on a bucket list excursion like a helicopter tour or an all day sightseeing adventure with many stops. It is true when at a port of call, many of the onboard shops will be closed. Also, you'll need to wait for the ship to set sail for the casino to reopen. But there's one area of the ship that will be open, and that's the spa. And one insider cruise tip that many newbies aren't aware of is that during port days, the ship spa and salon often run deals. So while others are off navigating the busy streets, you can unwind with a relaxing couple's massage, or you can enjoy fantastic views of the port from the comforts of a heated stone lounger or the hydrotherapy pool in the ship's thermal suite. We suggest you check with the spa staff on embarkation day or the day prior to the stop to see if they have any discounts or deals for that particular port of call. And yes, we've taken advantage of these deals on several cruises. You might also want to investigate some of the exclusive areas on the ship, which might offer day passes or discounts while in port as well. You might be able to get a cabana on the pool deck or passes to your ship's exclusive sun deck at a fraction of the cost. So now you can use some of that money you save by skipping a shore excursion and splurging on an upgraded experience on the ship. Now, whether your cruise is seven days long, 10 days long, or 14 days long, no one wants to wake up early at 5 a.m., two or three days, particularly several days in a row on vacation to catch that 7.30 a.m. tour or a tender boat. Now, if you're like us, you're planners, and if you do arrive at a destination that you really want to explore, odds are you're going to be waking up as early as possible to get on some of those coveted tours because many of them often leave early in the morning. But when you stay on a ship during port of call, you don't have to worry about those meeting times in the main theater. For once, you can actually rest and relax on your vacation. And that's something I don't often get to say or do. Skipping on going ashore means you can sleep in as late as you want. Who doesn't like a few extra hours to sleep and recharge? You can lounge around your cabin, perhaps order some breakfast from room service to have on your balcony, or just stake your claim in your favorite lounge chair to catch some rays. Now about those sun deck lounge chairs, one of the most annoying things you'll find on your cruise is that other cruisers tend to wake up super early on those sea days and stake claim the lounge chairs and then don't return for hours. They're called deck chair hogs and it's actually one of the things that frustrates me the most. Let me know in the comment section below if you've encountered these deck chair hogs or what really annoys you when you're sailing on a cruise ship. We'd love to know. But when you dock at a port of call, you're not likely to see those deck chair hogs out and about early in the morning. Now, admittedly, we're not big beach or resort people. So it actually still surprises me when fellow cruisers get off the ship, then they go grab a taxi, which then takes them to a hotel or a beach 
where they just lay around for the day. Literally, you just walked off a floating hotel with several pools and attractions. While it's true that on a sea day, the ship's pools are at capacity, the opposite is true when at a port of call. Most port of calls, you'll find the Lido deck is relatively empty. This means you can have the pools and hot tubs mostly to yourself. If you want to stretch out or take a few laps for exercise, stay on board the ship at your next stop. You'll enjoy the pool deck without feeling claustrophobic. And as I mentioned, you'll be able to find that perfect lounger as those deck chair hogs, well, they're off annoying other individuals ashore. If you're going on a cruise to unwind, then there's no better time to take advantage of that cruise ship drink package. While several of the bars insides will most likely be closed until early afternoon, Many of the outdoor decks will be open and those bars won't have any lines. Not to mention, there'll be plenty of bar servers making the rounds to a mostly empty pool deck. So it'll be very easy to order those pina coladas or daiquiris while enjoying the outdoor decks. With no wait at the bars and open lounges, you can start a conversation with the bartender or the servers to get to know the crew better. Or give yourself permission to try a new drink. Getting a fresh drink will be hassle-free if you don't like the new option. Given all the drinks are already paid for, you will not be wasting any money. Depending on the ship, your drink package might include specialty coffees at the onboard cafe. Now you can enjoy that cappuccino and read a good book in peace and quiet while everyone else is dealing with the crowds ashore. Now another reason we stay on board at a port of call has to do with exploring the ship. It is true that one of our cruise embarkation day tips is to explore the ship on the first day of your cruise. But often many of the venues are crowded. So when almost everyone's off the ship at a port of call, that's the ideal time to grab those coveted shots. We almost always bucket a port day to stay on board so we can explore the entire ship with few other cruisers around. Along the way, we make sure to grab those videos and photos and during our travels, we sometimes stumble on some hidden gems. You won't feel rushed to get the perfect angle or worry about holding others up if you're taking multiple shots because there really won't be anyone else around. This is a great time to grab those ship selfies in the normally high traffic areas. It is the foolproof way to ensure that your vacation pics are not photobombed. Odds are you booked the ship because it offered so many amenities. Modern day cruise ships have attractions like go-karts, water slides, or even just mini golf that are always crowded on those busy sea days. But you didn't go on vacation to wait in line. So now is the time to explore the ropes course, ride the roller coaster, scale the rock climbing wall, or even utilize a sports court on a port of call day. With most people off the ship, these busy areas are open for you to call your own. Make sure to check the cruise daily or the ship's app for the operating hours and times for these attractions, just to make sure the ones you really want to test out are available. Some of them also might require reservations. So on that cruise embarkation day or earlier in the cruise, make sure to check with the cruise activity staff and reserve a slot on that port of call day. Granted, the crowds will return by mid afternoon. So make sure to test out those ship's signature attractions early in the day. On sea days, getting breakfast or lunch can feel rather chaotic. There are swarms of people in the buffet, or you might encounter long queues at those grab and go venues. Not to mention seats are hard to come by. When you stay on the ship at a port of call, the buffet can feel like it's all your own. It will still be fully stocked with all of your favorite items, but you won't have to worry about whining kids or those line cutters stealing the last slice of pizza or that last chocolate chip cookie. Instead, grab an El Fresco seat and sit down and actually enjoy your lunch. If your cruise line has free room service, now's the time for a quiet and relaxing lunch on the balcony. You won't have to worry about the wind or noise as the ship isn't sailing. Most cruise ships close the main dining room and specialty restaurants when in port, but there should be a number of casual options still available for a nice leisurely lunch. If you're a few days into your cruise, you might realize quickly that that onboard gym is often packed with other passengers on those sea days. But once the captain gives the go-ahead to go ashore, that fitness center thins out quickly. Similar to the spa and salon, the fitness center is another public area that remains open when a ship is at a port of call. And most ship fitness centers 
have the same posted hours on a port day as they do on sea days, meaning they're open throughout the day. Thus, you can utilize all the equipment without any hassles whenever you choose. Or if you prefer to enjoy the weather, go for a run on the jogging track. While the ship is in port, you don't have to worry about dodging other travelers as you'll have the jogging track almost exclusively to yourself. Even if it's just a leisurely walk around the outdoor promenade, getting extra exercise during a port day will be more enjoyable and less crowded. That way, you won't feel so lousy ordering that extra dessert later in the evening. Another reason to stay on board at a particular port of call is because you've already visited that port on previous trips. Frequent cruisers have probably been to some of the same ports several times. If this is one of your numerous visits to Nassau Bahamas or one of the countless stops in Cosmo, Mexico, it might make sense to stay on board. As we've already mentioned, staying on the ship offers tons of benefits. If the ship is stopped at a cruise port you visited, you won't feel as guilty about not getting off. Although we do want to caution you, because keep in mind, you might not be the only individual at some of these stops who's been there before. If other like-minded cruisers you're sailing with also decide to skip out on this port of call, then the ship might not be as empty as you think. We've actually been on ships docked at some of these locations, and the pool deck was almost just as busy as a typical sea deck. So if you truly want a day where you have the ship all to yourself, then one of these more popular ports might not be a good place to stay on the ship. Now that you know one of our essential cruise ships, we need to find you the right cruise ship. Well, lucky for you, right here on YouTube, Heidi and I rate the nine newest cruise ships by comparing them on things like dining, entertainment, staterooms, activities, and more to help ensure your next cruise is smooth sailing.